They have once more crossed deep into the X zone where we would have difficulty tracking them. Oh no, not the X zone. I hate the X zone. Let's stay out of the X zone, guys. Nothing on Earth is more hideous than the X zone. Nothing! Thunder Lizards, give me a status report. Well, almost nothing. What was that? Uh, Squat said we have almost nothing to report, sir, because, well, see, we almost had something to report, but, uh, then that something, uh, went away. I want to see you three back at headquarters. Now! Yes, sir. We are on our way. So, Bill, what do you think? I call it tar. See? The tar sits here in a pit. Scooter, it's muck. It's just goo. It's disgusting black goo. But it's our disgusting black goo. We made it. It's our first achievement as humans. Here. Be proud. Hold your head up high, Bill. We've created. We're people. The first. The best. When does the hurting stop? Those humans are ruining everything. What kind of... The thunder lizards can't seek and destroy a couple of itty-bitty stupid little bipeds. It's as if you three aren't taking this seriously. Are you listening to me? Right yes, sir. Of course, sir. Right, right away, sir. Now, this afternoon, we're having our great military hardware show. Skeptics, those egghead steggies that are trying to bring peace to this great society, say that we, the military, are obsolete. That we are... we are... Uh, dinosaurs, sir? Of course we're dinosaurs. But they want to slash our military budget. Don't fear, General. As long as those evildoers, the thuggasaurs, remain out there in the X-Zone, there will always be a need for military might. Oh, I had mites once. Man, they itched. Forget the mites! I want those humans. If we could put those stuffed little humans on display at the military show, we'll be able to show those pencil pushers another disaster, a terrible force more deadly than even the Thuggasaurus has been averted by us, the boys in green. Well, we're all in green, sir. We're, uh, lizards. I mean soldiers, the military. Why do I even try? Now get out there and bring me back those humans. Good Cretaceous. It's a spaceship. Do you realize what we could learn from these creatures? Think of the technology. We could rule the world. I must talk to one of these creatures. Where are the occupants of this ship? And what is this disgusting gunk I'm standing in? Ah, well, sir, that's all that's left of the aliens who crashed this ship. I guess they, uh, hit pretty hard, sir. Oh, these hot stones are killing my feet! Okay, I've got an idea. Look, we'll put something on our feet to protect them. How ridiculous these brown silk leaves are protection enough. Just trust me on this, okay? Okay? Look, look what I found. See? We'll call them shoes. See? Don't your little tootsies feel protected and safe? Gee, Scooter, maybe this time you actually had a good idea. I, huh? Uh, my shoes are squirming! Ah! Listen, that terrible howling! It, it's them! The humans! I'm gonna open up! Wait, what's that smell? I smell it too. Thugasaurus! Hmm, a 
computer chip. A vial of something called penicillin. Hmm. Plans to create clean, burning nuclear fusion energy. I will never need this. Uh, what about this, sir? Don't be ridiculous! Now, here is something. Here, here now is a device brought from advanced beings that we could use to advance our evil species far beyond any advances the Dinosaur Society could hope to achieve. Uh, what is it, sir? Well, obviously, it's something that, that, uh, something that's pretty darn important is what it is. And with this, this device, we shall rule the world. <laughs> you hear that? They have that, that thing. They sure do, and they pilfered it from that crashed airship. A craft that has obviously fallen from a distant and more advanced galaxy. Really, Doc? Smarter than us? I can't imagine there's anything in the universe smarter than us dinosaurs, eh, squat? <laughs> Whatever that tiny little thing is, we must get it out of those Thuggersaw's bony claws. We move. What about the humans? Forget the humans. Come on. <laughs> That's better. It sure is, but... Hey, Bill, you know what I just realized? This isn't water our feet are sticking in. Nope, it's... That's your stupid boiling tar pit! <laughs> there are too many of them. The odds are not in our favor. Yes, but we have the element of surprise! Ouch! 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 Humans! Oh, Why you? Oh. oh, no, you don't! Thunder Lizards rule, Bonehead! Squad, Liberty Play! <laughs> that must be the space creatures! Capture them! <sighs> What's happening? I'm not sure! Please, little creatures, we implore you. We have desperate visitors to your planet from the galaxy of Golem. Do you know where there is more substance like that on your walking devices? We have run out of fuel and are in great danger from those terrible bony creatures. It appears you hold the key to our survival in that black goo on your feet. Sure, I can show you where there's lots more. Follow me. No, oh, we have a faster way. Great. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good as new. You have done a wonderful thing. Aye. Now we have enough fuel to return to our planet before dinner. See, what's this? Huh? What is this? Oh, that's a simple gowling disintegration ray. May I try it? Sure you can, laddie. Go to town. It devastates anything in its path. Whee! I send you to bring me humans, and you bring me a marble. What am I going to show at the military hardware show? This black ball with three holes? I don't know if it's really going to matter, sir. Um, the whole city is apparently being destroyed by some kind of disintegration. Get out! Get out! Get out! He's mad. Better go. Call you. And take this marble with you. <laughs> hey, this is fun. Want to try it, Bill? I miss the motion of the ship. I, I, I. Well, we've really had a lovely time, really. Even Bill. Bye, nice aliens. Thanks for the lift. Drop us a line sometime. What next? <gasps> the Gulling Ball. The precious orb of peace. I cannot find it anywhere, Captain. We must have left it behind. And so it shall have to remain. I hope those Earthlings appreciate the gift we have left them. I'm sure they will quickly decipher the real meaning behind the black orb and the very symbolic three holes. Then, like us on the planet Gowling, the creatures of planet Earth will live in peace and harmony for all time. But what if they do not understand it? What if they do the wrong thing with the Gowling ball and carelessly throw it aboard? Or even worse, roll it into something. 
What then, Captain? What then? Then the inhabitants of Earth are doomed for all time. You see, Bill? I figured out what this thing we found is for. We'll call it Goaling, after our new space friends. I must say, Scooter, for the first time ever, you may be right. being chased, all I could think about was being here. When I was here, all I could think about was getting back over there. You see, Sharky the Shark Dog ran away. I know it sounds insane, but I missed the little fella. I was wondering if there was something I could do to help. I was also wondering if I could get those overhead fans secured. Everybody gets everything he asks for. I got my chance to go find Sharky, and when it was over, I'd never want to do it again. Egg! Egg! You gotta help me! Egg! Egg, wake up! Come on, Egg! We gotta find Sharky! These are some of Sharky's friends. They think they know where he might have run off to. Dog Sack has reason to believe Sharky the Shark Dog may have run up Metropolis River. Play the tape. Transmission 11 received 4300 hours, Sector Peter Victor King. <laughs> Transmission received 11:26:93 out. Um, as you can tell, <clears throat> um, Sharky the Shark Dog has uh, possibly lost it. Sharky was one of the most outstanding guard dogs our species ever produced. Well trained and obedient, and he was a good dog too. He's out there operating beyond the pale of any decent canine behavior. Uh, we have reason to believe. <clears throat> He's running with a pack of wild dogs who worship him <clears throat> like a demi-dog and follow his every order, no matter how ridiculous. Eek the cat, you have got to go up the river and get Sharky back. He's running with strays. Well, sure, Annabelle, I'll go find Sharky. It never hurts to help. And it doesn't normally, but this time it would. I headed up Metropolis River on a mission to bring home a lost little puppy. And not just any puppy, a puppy that bites me a lot, but I had to help. It's what I do. The crew of the boat were mostly just kittens, rock and rollers with one foot in the litter box. There was Chef. They call him that because he wears that funny hat. And Spill. I have no idea why they call him Spill. And Chief. They call him Chief because it sounded almost like Chef, but it had an eye in it, and it was easy to remember. Why did Sharky ever leave Annabelle's yard? It made no sense. What was he looking for? He had graduated at the top of his class. His medical record showed he had all his shots. He had a nice doghouse and an impressive collar, too. Whatever got into him? <laughs> Why bow? He got plenty of exercise, too. Whatever it was, it was something that was something that made him leave the yard, all right. And I wasn't coming back until I found out what that something of a something was. Ah! What was that? Elk light! What? Elk light! Every time those elks are around, something terrible happens. It was Elks, all right. The Airborne Elk Culinary Squadron, Mobile Barbecue Division. Captain Elmo and his boys spend their time flying around Metropolis looking for the best place to have a beach party. Well, Elk Mobile. Those boys just couldn't stay put. Maybe Elmo knew something about Sharky's whereabouts. We had to ask. We need more barbecue sauce down here! We need more barbecue sauce! Ah! Help me, help me! The steak is overcooked! Okay, easy with those ribs, boys. Flip those steaks, they're burning! Ah! I said medium rare. That chicken is almost done. Incoming! Excuse me, Captain Elmo. Have you seen this puppy dog? Well, I'll be. I do know this little puppy. He grabbed some hamburger meat from some of my boys. Do you know where on the river you saw him? Oh, sure. It was 30 clicks above the Dog Dulong Bridge. Gee, Captain Elmo, can you show us a spot? 
Oh no, little kitty, it's pretty hairy up there. We tried to have a barbecue there and we came up against Alvin. Gee, Spill, what's an Alvin? Mutant alligators. See, the alligators transmogrified into nasty reptiles from the chemicals at the Metropolis Toxic Waste Plant, two clicks above the Dog Do Long Bridge. They hate beach parties. There's nothing in the world worth a going back up there, little kitty. Nothing's gonna make me risk the lives of me and my brave crew. Yay! Yeah, it's too bad, Captain Omo. If you help me find Sharky, I was gonna offer you the prize at the bottom of this cereal box. Oh, man! Okay, everybody, buckle up, cause here we go! Music? Yeah, I use Pop Goes the Weasel. It really annoys everybody. Gee, it sure is calm and peaceful out here. Yeah, I hope no beach partying elks come along to spoil it for us. Okay, Spunky, hit it! How come you guys all put earplugs in? Because we hate this song! <laughs> <laughs> Or do I hear Pop Goes the Weasel playing? It's the elves! They're lighting up the hibachis! Hit them with the water balloons! Oh, Rick the Romeo Zulu! We need some calls down here at 3 o'clock! We got gators going across the bridge. Looks like they got our beach chairs. Don't these reptiles ever give up? Okay, boys, let her go! Hotel Golf 667 Charlie Bravo 6. Roger, Elmo, get your people down. There's gonna be a big one. Wow, well, Captain Elmo, how are those pilots gonna know where to drop all that charcoal lighter fluid? Ah, don't worry about that, little kitty. I got an elk over there signaling them in with those giant flaming torches. Torches? Woohoo! <laughs> Gee, sir, we better order some more lighter fluid. You smell that? That smell. That charcoal lighter smell. Smells like barbecue. Yeah, that beach party had to end eventually, but I wouldn't be there to see it. I was going to get Sharky, and he was close. I could just feel it. Ah! Oh. What is it? Straw wrappers! I'm in! I'm in! Zap him with a siren, man! The litter box, and that's what I've been dreaming about. Sharky was close, I could feel it. What I'd been searching for was one step away. Ah! <laughs> Sharky? Oh, right. It's me, Sharky Eek, from next door. And Annabelle's really worried about you. I've come to take you home. <coughs> what the heck do you mean I'm just an errand boy sent by Annabelle to collect a bill? A bill from Wally's Meat World? Sharky, what have you done? 300 pounds of prime hamburger meat? <coughs> Kumbaya, why, Sharky? Why would you and your stray dog friends want to make the biggest cheeseburger ever eaten? <coughs> Oh, I see. I never looked at it that way. <gasps> this is madness, Sharky. You can't do it. All that red meat and cheese, your cholesterol level will rise to dangerous levels. You'll get a bad tummy ache. I can't let you do it. You gotta come home with me. And so I brought Sharky home. The knock on the head seemed to fix him. He never ran away or grumbled like a method actor again. As for me, I learned something on my journey up Metropolis River, straight into the heart of darkness. I learned how far a dog might go for a good barbecue. And I'll tell you, it's pretty darn far, all right.